Gleam is a statically typed, functional language for building systems that scale. The language was designed from the ground up to be simple and consistent. It's functional programming for the Grug brain developer. But simple can be powerful, and Gleam has a lot of features that make functional programming easier to read, easier to write, and easier to reason about. I'd like to talk about one of these features today. It's my favorite Gleam feature, and one that, conceptually, doesn't seem like it would do a lot, but in practice can massively improve how you write Gleam. I am, of course, talking about the use keyword. The way it works is utterly simple and it can replace many features you see in other languages, but it's also Gleam's most misunderstood feature. In this video, we'll take a look at why use is so powerful, where to use it, and when you should probably avoid it. So let's dive in. If you believe all the Java bros and C Sharp evangelists, there's a place that all developers dread, a place so terrible it should be avoided at all costs, callback hell. For the lucky few who've yet to encounter this horrific place, let me explain. Callbacks are a convention shared across many languages notably JavaScript, and are essentially functions that you pass to other functions to be executed within their scope. This is a really powerful idiom, but when applied too liberally, it leads to the ultimate destruction of your code. Callback hell is what happens when callbacks are chained, one inside the other. Each time a callback is used, your code gets indented just a little until, bam, your code is so far to the right of your screen that it's absolutely unreadable. Use is our knight in shining armor, here to rescue us from our own mess. But how? Use does one thing and only one thing. It flattens out your callback. It's special syntactic sugar used when a function takes a callback as its final argument. Instead of defining an anonymous function within your function call, as you might see with arrow functions in JavaScript, use allows you to define the callback beneath the function call, avoiding additional nesting and ultimately callback hell. Let's look at a simple example, implementing defer. Many programming languages like Go or Zig have a dedicated keyword for a feature called defer. The purpose is to specify an operation to run at the end of a scope. Here's an example of some Go code that uses defer to close a database connection at the end of a function scope. The nice thing about this code is that once we're done with the defer bit, there's no longer any nesting. The rest of our code is aligned to the left. The semantics of the defer keyword are easy to implement as a Gleam function. We simply take in our keyword function, take in the code we'd like to run as our body, run the body, run the cleanup, and then return the result of the body. But when we use this function, we don't get that nice left alignment. And this is exactly where use comes in. With use, our code looks like this. Whoa, what just happened? I hear you asking. It's very simple. As I said earlier, use allows us to treat all code beneath it as the body of the callback. See how the postgres.execute call sort of pops out and is free now? There's a very simple transformation to follow when converting code to use use. Start with use, then move the parameters of your callback to the right of the use keyword. Type an arrow pointing left, followed by your function call. Finally, pull your callback out so its body becomes the remainder of the body of the function. It all makes sense, right? Much like subscribing to my channel makes sense. The button is just a little further down the page. With use syntax, we were able to recreate Go's built-in defer with just a regular function. So what else can we recreate? We could start with try syntax from Zig or Rust. We could implement something akin to early returns in a functional language without needing any nesting. Or we could even add concise middleware and context management for our web servers with no macros required. Are you sensing a theme? Gleam prioritizes keeping the language extremely simple. Use is a simple construct. The control for is very clear, but it empowers us to replace multiple fancy language features with just plain old functions. The key insight was understanding that these extra language concepts were all fundamentally about avoiding excessive nesting and callback hell. So Gleam solved the problem at its root with just one feature, and all it does is flatten that callback. But before you run off to write all your Gleam code to use use, we need to have a talk. Use syntax isn't all that complicated, but when overused, it can make code more difficult to follow. There isn't really a community consensus yet on when to use use, but there are some common patterns. Generally, using use with result.try can help keep error handling code cleaner if the error case would need you to return early. Making use-friendly middleware functions is generally seen as the right thing to do, and don't put anonymous functions on the right-hand side of use. It's just kind of pointless. All that said, here's some unsolicited advice. Wait until you have a problem to solve a problem. If your code has one or two layers of nesting, but it's straightforward to understand, don't change a thing. If your code has three plus layers of nesting or the context of when and how a branch executes is becoming difficult to hold in your mind, use is probably a good option. But most importantly, follow the principle of least surprise and use use to make your code simpler. At this point, 
I hope you understand how Use works a little better than you might have done previously. If you want to read more about Use, I highly recommend the article Using Use in Gleam by Erica Rowland, which I'll leave in the video description. You might have noticed that Use is commonly used for error handling. In fact, I mentioned Use in my video on error handling in Gleam. That video is on the left of your screen now, and the video YouTube thinks you should watch is on the right. And I won't judge you if you choose their pick over mine. See ya!